Thank you for joining us. Welcome back. And joining me now is Ewan Mason from the Canterbury Astronomical uh, Society. Ewan, it's lovely to meet you. Nice thank to be you here. for popping in. How are you? Fine, thank you. We were talking about the fact, I, I don't know whether the viewers at home had this as well, but I had that Mars hoax email that, you know, right. seems to always pop up every few years. That's right. I think it's been floating around the internet for about eight years. Yeah. And uh, some of it's accurate. Some of the numbers are accurate. But the thing that is in, inaccurate is this the idea that, the, the, the if it's the one I'm thinking of, mm. that Mars will be the size of the full moon. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, we don't see Mars the size of the full moon from Earth, uh, unless you've got a, a, a telescope, of course. Yeah, so but, that's uh, never going to no, no. happen. <laughs> but in 2003, we had an, a, a close approach of Mars to the Earth. And How then, close did we get? Um, well, I don't know the exact distance, but uh, Mars has a highly elliptical orbit. Uh, and it goes around more slowly around the sun than the Earth does, and the Earth's inside it. So from time to time, the Earth catches up and passes it. Mm. And it happens if it happens to pass Mars when it's at a close approach to the sun, when it's because the sun is at one of the focuses of this ellipse, then you get a close approach to Mars. And if mm. we pass it uh, when it's a long way from the sun, then we get a, 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 a long distance between the Earth and Mars. So um, periodically, you have these really close approaches. And mm. of course, Mars is fantastic through a telescope at that time. We can see all sorts of details on the surface, and we have a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah. I bet you do too. So if you did get that email, parts of it are correct, but it's certainly not happening anytime <laughs> yeah, soon. That's right. <laughs> now, Ewan, tell us about the Canterbury Astronomical Society, because it's a mm -hmm. wonderful society. We're so lucky to have it here, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Uh, it has over 100 members. Um, it was born uh, many decades ago, I believe, in the 1960s. And we're fortunate that we own uh, our own land and we own our own observatory outside of Christchurch. It's about and 20 minutes really from town. It's really important, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm. really nice. And we have some fantastic equipment there. We have a, a sort of equipment that most amateurs couldn't hope to own on their own. Wow. Uh, these are very large telescopes, fantastic machines to look through, and a uh, var great variety of machines. So from time to time, we host the public out there, usually every Friday night uh, while we're on New Zealand Standard Time, because mm -hmm. um, it's dark enough early in the evening. And uh, so the public can come out and, and have a look through the scopes, and we tell them what things are and tell them the stories of the, the objects that we that we see. It's amazing, actually, to really get those stories behind it, because mm -hmm. it really gives you a greater it uh, does, understanding It does, yes. not just pretty pictures. It's, mm. it's more of what they are and where they've come from and where they're going and yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Because we get so busy yeah. in our day to day lives that we forget mm -hmm. about the wonder that's up there, don't we? That's right. It's very humbling to have a look yeah. and, and have a look at the cosmos and realize just how tiny we are. Mm, that's right, in comparison, <laughs> that's right. which is quite scary. I yeah. really want to talk about these pictures sure. to you. And, um, okay. Because I think we need to spend a bit of time on these because these are amazing. Now, okay. uh, just to let you know, you and you took these photographs yourself, yes, I did. didn't you? Yes. Okay. So let's start with this amazing traffic light here because this okay. is rather this spectacular. Is, this is the southern lights, the aurora. Aurora Australis. So these and are our lights, yes, the southern lights. Yes, that's right. And from time to time, they're visible from outside of Christchurch. The, the city lights mean that you don't really see them from in town. But uh, this was in, uh, in no, uh, March of 2001. Wow. And that was the peak of what's called the solar cycle. So when the sun's very active, when it has a lot of sunspots on its surface, uh, it's likely to have what's called a coronal mass ejection, when a, a mass of, of gas is of, of ions are pushed out from the sun. And these are charged ions. They're, they're electrically charged, of course, being ions. And when they interact with the Earth's magnetic field, they spiral down onto the poles, and they interact with the atmosphere. And what you're seeing are different colors from different gases in the atmosphere that are interacting with this energy from the sun. And you managed and, to catch that. How long did you take for this? Um, that was about 40, 40 seconds, that exposure. But it actually looked like that by eye. And this is the wow. best one that I've ever seen. And we wow. were all out at the observatory turning somersaults, of course. I bet you did, <laughs> yes. too. Because I kind of yeah. mentioned to you before, it's one of these pictures that it actually doesn't look real. It's so incredible. Yes. And this is exactly the what it looked like to your looked eye. looked like that to my eye, yes. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Okay, now this, this is rather beautiful yeah, too, to capture this. That's a wide field image. That's about 50 degrees of sky looking across there. So it's not taken through a telescope. It's just taken through a normal camera. Mm -hmm. um, most people will have seen or at least have heard of Comet McNaught, which came through uh, in 2007, was it? 2008, 2007. And uh, this is one of the great comets. This is a comet that um, appeared enormous to, to southern observers. And uh, I was just lucky enough to get this one um, from Thompson's track in Canterbury. Oh, really? And what you're looking yeah. at, the base of that image, is actually the, the light pollution from Ashburton. Oh, um, wow. But the, the image uh, is a really sharp one, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to have had it published in National Geographic. So, Congratulations. You know, it's had quite a currency. I didn't expect it. I just sent it to all my friends and said, look at what we're seeing. And, yeah. You know, and one of them wrote back and said, well, you realize this is magazine quality. Yes. You know, I said, oh, maybe it is. So I sent it off to a whole lot of papers and magazines and got everybody wanted to publish it. And I got responses from, oh, yes, we'll be very kind and publish your, your, paper, your picture <laughs> for you if you wish from, uh, we'd like a three-month exclusive from National Geographic, and we'll give you 5000 
thousand dollars for it. So it took me a little while wow. to decide which of those to choose. <laughs> <Yeah. of course. laughs> well done, that's incredible. Yeah. Congratulations. And now, this one here am is. Am I a, holding it the right? Um, it way? doesn't really matter. You can see it. Most people look at it this way, but um, okay. it, 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 you can see it in different ways, up depending on where you are on Earth at the time. Uh, this is the Orion Nebula, and it's called the Great Nebula in Orion. It's a place. Where, it's kind of like a stellar nursery. It's where new stars are being manufactured. Um, and the stars in the center of that image have just recently switched on. That's in the last few million years, <laughs> and, which is kind of recent in astronomical terms. It is. Yeah. And uh, so they've they put out a kind of a, what's called a stellar wind. Uh, it's a, a stream of protons uh, once they switch on. And so they originally form from that gas and dust that's surrounding them. Uh, and then the, the, the stream of protons has pushed the gas and dust out into that big bowl shape. And they're, wow. it's mainly hydrogen. And so the hydrogen is mostly ionized. And from time to time, it gets an electron. And then it, when it pushes off the electron, it loses energy at just the right frequency to make that red light that you're seeing. So it glows in red. So how did you yes. take that photograph? Uh, that's through my own telescope from my backyard in Christchurch. I've wow. got an 11 inch telescope. And it's actually a composite of about 60 images um, and four different types of exposures. The, this object's very bright in the center and very, very uh, dim on the outside. So you need to take a very short exposure in the center and a very, very long exposure to get capture the outside so you can see the full bandwidth of the image. Wow. So, they're absolutely yeah. incredible, yeah. But if that. people come out to the observatory, they can see that sort of thing through the telescope. Okay, so that's yeah, what but, they can, they can but see through not the not in color like that. Our eyes see in black and white and in dim light, unfortunately. So of we course. don't see much color in telescopes. We see, sometimes we see binary stars that are of different colors, and they're bright enough so you might see a blue, and an, there's a famous one called Albireo in Cygnus, mm. which is um, blue and, and orange, a lovely contrast. So we can show them that sort of thing. But when they look at the Orion Nebula, it'll mostly be in black and white, but they will see pretty much that, the splendor of this, this place where Which is new stars are being made. Yeah. Well, Ewan, thank you very much. Thank you so much for bringing in those photographs as yeah. well. They've given us a really good look at the yeah. sorts of things that can be achieved. And of course, the Canterbury Astronomical Society can give you any further information you need. You Absolutely. can find out about People those People are welcome to come night. out on a Friday night. Thank Lovely. you. Lovely. Thank you very okay. much, Ewan. And have a look at the website as well, which Thanks. is www.cas.org.nz.